Hey everyone, it's Jenny from the channel This Story Ain't Over, and I'm here for episode four of hashtag Epic Book Rex. So if you're new here, this is a monthly series that I host here on the Epic Reads channel where I recommend a bunch of YA contemporaries based on a certain theme. I've had so much fun recommending books to you guys and hearing your response and just reading some new books myself for the themes that I've been recommending. And so today's video, I'm super excited to be recommending you some YA mysteries. So I am not actually that much of a mystery reader myself, so I picked up a lot of new favorites this time around for this video and I just really, really enjoyed that. But there are a couple here that I've read previously and really enjoyed so I am just so excited to recommend all of them to you today. Alright so the first book that I want to recommend to you today is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. So this is the first book in her Truly Devious series and I also have the second book The Vanishing Stair which also came out earlier this year. I recently finished Truly Devious and I'm in the middle of The Vanishing Stair and I'm absolutely loving it and I just really want to know what happens and it's just kind of tearing me apart. So if you don't know Truly Devious kind of follows two timelines and both timelines have their own mysteries to them but in both timelines the story is kind of centered around this one place called Ellingham Academy. So Ellingham Academy is this private school in Vermont and it's set on this high hill and it's this very mysterious and strange place. It was built by an early 20th century tycoon by the name of Albert Ellingham and he wanted to make a place where learning was a game. But only two years after the academy opens Albert Ellingham's wife and daughter Iris and Alice are kidnapped by someone called Truly Devious. And then in the other part of the time timeline in the book in our present day, there's a girl named Stevie Bell who is going into her first year at Ellingham Academy. So she is leaving her home and going off to this private academy where everyone who goes there is kind of very special in some way. And Stevie Bell herself is a true crime aficionado. So Stevie is not only using this opportunity to get away from her parents, but she's also using it as an opportunity to solve the cold case of Truly Devious. Stevie is a total expert on the Ellingham case and she knows that she can solve it if she can just find the right clues. I really enjoy this book. I had so much fun reading it and one of the things that really was compelling about it was not only the mystery and kind of getting this backstory of 1936 and Albert Ellingham and the people who created the school and all the mystery kind of going on in there because you do get kind of snapshots of what happens in 1936. But besides that, I really did love the characters in the book in the main timeline during Stevie's timeline and I love Stevie as a character. She is kind of an awkward girl. She has anxiety. She's dealing with a lot of stuff and she is starting at this new school and she has some friends that she met online that she knows at the school but she's also meeting a lot of new people as well. Stevie is kind of navigating, you know, the school life but also this mystery that's going on and there's also a crazy twist that comes in the middle of the book as well that kind of raises the stakes. I also really loved all of Stevie's friends and seeing each of the personalities that were at the school. Each of them has kind of a strange backstory to them and you really want to know more about each of them. This book also features a little bit of a romance which I didn't know going in so I was really surprised by that and I really actually enjoyed it. This was super addicting and I definitely recommend it if you're into true crime, if you are into crime shows, if you're into mysteries or if you like characters who show a bit of anxiety and if you you identify with that like that this was just really great for that and I will say while I'm in the middle of the vanishing stair this book just kind of raises the stakes even from the beginning so I definitely recommend this as a series because I am enjoying it so much all right the next book that I have to recommend to you today is Sadie by Courtney Summers so this is a book that I read a while ago and I absolutely loved and it just really hit home for me it is about two sisters and a involves murder and a podcast and there's just so many elements about it that I loved. Basically in this book there are two timelines and kind of two perspectives similar to Truly Devious. So one of the perspectives that we're following is of this guy named Wes McRae who is this popular radio personality who gets a call from the stranger about this girl that's gone missing named Sadie Hunter. So Wes McRae doesn't really think much of it because girls go missing all the time and you know he doesn't think it's a big deal. But then when his boss finds out that Sadie fled home after the brutal murder of her little sister or Maddie, Wes kind of takes interest in the story and starts a podcast about it. And so part of the story is kind of following Wes McRae as he's uncovering the story, as he's meeting people in Cold Creek, Colorado, where Sadie is from, and he is talking to them and trying to get clues from them and trying to figure out where Sadie went. And then of course the other perspective that we get in this book is from Sadie herself. And so we're piecing together Wes McRae's podcast with Sadie's own story about what's going on. One of the things that I really loved about this book was that Sadie was a very very unlikable character. She doesn't try to make herself easily swallowable. She is unapologetically herself and she comes across through the page. She just jumps out of the page and I think she was just such a vibrant character. 
Sadie's care for her sister was also one of the big points for me. I have sisters too and so it's just really beautiful seeing her care so much about her younger sister and want to figure out what happened to her. But not only that, Sadie is kind of a dark character. She wants revenge for the murder of her little sister and she is going out there seeking it regardless of what happens to her and her well-being. So it's definitely the book for you if you're looking for a more hard-hitting mystery. Alright, the next book that I want to recommend to you today is If You're Out There by Katie Lautzenheiser. So this this is one that I recently picked up and really really enjoyed like I was not expecting to love it as much as I did and it was interesting in the sense that although this is like very much a mystery I felt like the friendship and the relationships in this book were just so strong and vibrant and I felt like they took the front seat as opposed to the mystery which I kind of really liked. So this book basically follows our main character Zan who is best friends with a girl named Priya and Priya and Zan have basically grown up together have shared everything with each other but when Priya has to suddenly move to California California, the two of them have to part, and Priya pleads with Zan to keep in touch. And so Zan expects that everything's gonna be okay. But lo and behold, when the summer hits and Priya is gone, she stops contacting Zan. She just completely ghosts her and Zan doesn't know what to think. Priya suddenly has this new life that she keeps posting about on social media and Zan is just like, why are you ghosting me girl? Like, what happened? And so Zan is trying to kind of deal with the fact that her best friend won't contact her, refuses to talk to her, refuses to pick up her calls. And so Zan is dealing with the fact that Priya is just outright ghosting her when she meets this guy named Logan in her Spanish class. And so Logan is a bit of a mystery himself, she doesn't know a lot about him, but the two of them kind of click really quickly and he is just as interested as she is in the mystery of why Priya won't contact her, won't talk to her, won't even pick up her calls. And so when Priya puts up a selfie of her that seems too old to be recent, Zan gets suspicious and she starts to think that maybe the reason Priya isn't contacting her is because she can't contact her. This was just a really fun and fast mystery. I really enjoyed it. The things that I loved most about this were one, the relationship between Zan and Priya. You hear a lot of backstory about them and Zan always has Priya in her thoughts. But it's also just seeing how much they care for each other. I feel like friendships are often given a backseat in books and so it was just really nice to see that relationship put on page. But another thing that I really loved about this was the relationship between Zan and Logan. They have a little bit of a romance and they were just super adorable and cute and I think that that was a really strong point of the book as well. So if you're looking for a low-key mystery with some amazing best friends and a cute romance, I definitely think this is the book for you. All right, the next book that I have to recommend to you today is also part of a series and that is A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. So this is the first book in the Charlotte Holmes series. So the first one is Study in Charlotte, the second one is The Last of August, the third one is The Case for Jamie, and the fourth and final book that came out earlier this year is A Question of Holmes. So I have read the whole Charlotte Holmes series and I absolutely love it to pieces. It is just one of my favorite series on the planet. And one of the reasons is I went into the first book not really knowing much about it and absolutely fell in love. So if you don't know, A Study in Charlotte is basically a gender-bent version of Sherlock Holmes. So if you know the Sherlock Holmes stories, there's Sherlock Holmes, the detective, and then his kind of wingman, assistant, best friend, James Watson. So this book is set in our modern day and it follows the perspective of Jamie Watson who is basically a like great great descendant of James Watson, the famed you know, friend of Sherlock Holmes. So in this version of our world, Sherlock and Watson were real people and they had families and they had descendants who end up in this book. So this book opens with Jamie receiving a rugby scholarship to this school called Sheringford Prep, which is basically this like fancy school in Connecticut, which is only an hour away from Jamie's estranged father. So Sheringford is just a little too uncomfortably close to his father, but it also is the school of the great great granddaughter of Sherlock Holmes, Charlotte. Holmes. So besides being Sherlock's descendant, Charlotte is also very similar to Sherlock. She not only has his incredible deductive skills, but she also has his volatile temper. So when Jamie and Charlotte meet, they are off to a really rocky start, but things get even more complicated when there is a murder on campus. And so when the murder is suspiciously pinned on Charlotte and Jamie, the two of them kind of have to work together to clear their name. I really love this book as a series and as a whole. I started reading it when the third book came out and I've been following it ever since and it was just such a great time 
time, I really fell in love with the characters and the mystery that Brittany Cavallaro tells. I think one of the strongest points of this series and this book is the relationship between Charlotte and Jamie. They have this really weird relationship that starts off rocky, turns into friendship, and then kind of something more. And you are seeing it through so many phases, but also seeing how much they care for each other and how much that shines through as they come together to solve mysteries. But in addition to all that, I really loved each of them as a character themselves. Jamie is a very thoughtful guy who really cares about Charlotte. And Charlotte is also dealing with a lot of things, a lot of family pressure, societal pressure, expectations that people have for her as the descendant of Sherlock Holmes. And seeing the two of them against the world is just so heartwarming. And I absolutely love this series so, so much. And I definitely think you should pick it up. So if you like Sherlock Holmes, if you wanted something gender bent, if you like books set in boarding schools, like this is the book for you. All right, and the last book that I have to recommend to you today is also part of a series. It's the first book in the series. I have not yet read the rest, but I am just so excited to read them now because I just finished the first one and it was amazing. And that book is The Diviners by Libba Bray. So this one is a little bit of a different mystery from the other ones that I mentioned today. So all of those were mostly contemporary mysteries, but this one does have a side of supernatural and occult. But I think at its core, it is very much a contemporary story. You are meeting different characters from different walks of life and seeing them go through different struggles as they solve a crazy mystery going on. So this book basically takes place in 1926 in New York and it follows a various cast of characters but mainly it follows our main character Evie O'Neill. Evie has basically been exiled from her home in Ohio by her parents to go live with her uncle Will in New York who owns a museum of supernatural and occult things and has a unhealthy obsession with them. Evie is prone to partying and dancing and drinking a bit too much and that's what gets her exiled and so when she comes to New York she's just excited to do more of that but her plans are kind of thrown off when a series of murders start happening in New York. The murders are kind of occult in nature and her uncle Will is enlisted to help the police find the killer. But Evie has a secret that no one really knows. She is something called a diviner. She has this supernatural ability to kind of take an object and sense from it something about the person it belongs to. So she can basically read objects for information. But this is Evie's secret. She hasn't really told anyone. She doesn't want to be seen as a freak. And she also just has other priorities than murders and mysteries. She just wants to have a fun time in New York City in the 20s. This book just has a really fun cast of characters and each of them has their own things kind of going on and you see all of them come together to solve this mystery in a really interesting way. This book definitely gets really dark in the sense that it was very creepy. Like this is definitely more on the horror-ish side, obviously because of the supernatural elements, but it is on the more scary side. So if you wanted something less scary, I'd probably opt for one of the other mysteries in this video but if you wanted something more scary this is your book but I absolutely love this it is also on the longer side and has some really rich descriptions you can definitely tell how much research and time Libba Bray put into this book so it was just really interesting on so many levels and I definitely recommend it if you were not only looking for a mystery but also some really interesting world building and you know historical content all right, so those are all of the YA mysteries that I wanted to recommend to you today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had so much fun reading all of these books. So if you are into mysteries, or even if you aren't, definitely go check one of them out. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode of Hashtag Epic Book Rex. Bye!